Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we are going to be painting up our Kellhounds Striker Lance. So I just got this uh, box in from Etten Games down in Albuquerque. So we've got our four mechs. Ah, there's the cards. So we have our cards here. So I'm normally not that big into painting mercenaries. I did enjoy the uh, wolf ones, so I'm thinking, okay, let's do a little more here. Now, we have four mechs, and I can tell Sean at the store had already gotten into it. I guess there's a little terrain pieces out of sorts. So I'll have to decide which one do I want to paint. I'm filling this one. Because he's definitely the beast of the lot. He comes off. Alright, go on, go on there. Oh well. I don't like the jumping ones, but I do. So the idea is I yeah, I'm not that familiar with the Kellhounds. I know they're big, but I haven't read any of the stories on them. So let's see which one I want to paint. Right. So they got two color schemes here. We got the dark one, the red and black. So we got Night Sky, Crusader, Griffin, Wolfhound. I'll probably see those are all the red pilots in here. Hey. Oh, so they have different mercenary units. 12th Vegan Rangers. Okay. Alright, so red and black it is. So we have two options when we do this. Um. We can, if we're going to do the red and black color scheme, we can prime these all red or prime these all black. Um, let me go see how much primer I have, then we'll be back. Now to paint our guys, I'm not going to do the bases on this one, but uh, let's see. We primed um, uh, Citadel's Chaos Black. We used uh, Citadel's Mephiston Red and Moot Green and then the Normal Oil. And from the Army Painter line, you use Necromancer Cloak, Filthy Cape, Poisonous Cloud, Matte White, Ice Storm, and Moon Dust. So, let's get painting. Alright, so now I have primed my lance. As you can see, all the mechs are done in black. So I used a Chaos Black. But if you're at Lowe's or Home Depot, Krylon's uh, Black primer, not paint and primer. I prefer the Krylon High Heat. That'll work just fine too. This gives a little more matte finish. Now you'll notice for the booster here, for the Contrail, I did this in Army Painter's uh, Gray. Uh, just because it make it easier to do what I'm going to do for the smoke. Now you'll see this just fits right in here. Now I finally figured out this extra piece that came in here can fit on his little boot. And his foot thruster, you can see it fits right down in there. I didn't prime this because what I'm thinking you could do is if you had an extra base, which I didn't see in the box, you could do is just decide, well, I want him boosting like that, or switch him to the other base, and he's just boosting like that. So it does give you a little variance. Um, gluing this together would make it harder to store in my cases, but it looks like I could just kind of like jam them in together. So you do have some options here. I guess you could cut off this contrail, put this one on, and have the shorter guy, but it's less dramatic. I don't get to play that much, so I just have a statement piece on my shelf for me to look at. So we're going to work on the black hair. And so when you look at the art, you can see... We've got three colors, we're 
four colors we're going to be working primarily with black red we have a gray right there and we have a green we're going to throw a little extra colors to accent it but what you notice about the Callahan's style is its bottom half is all legs um, is all black except for the kneecaps and it's the top of the chest and up is red while the bottom half of the chest and down is black um, forearms and shoulders are red and it appears fists and weapon systems are gray the um, cockpit armor is green so the one exception to that paint scheme is the night sky the whole torso seems to be red, most of the arms are red, and the uh, whole uh, lower half of the leg, the knee down, is um, red. So we'll try to follow that paint style, but to get started, and remember I want to show this as painting a squad, normally I just paint one miniature at a time, and I'm painting the other guys off to the side. Let's try to give a little example of um, an assembly line here. So I've taken some Necromancer Cloak, and I'm going to take my dry brush. I don't want to get this guy done quickly, but we're mostly going to focus on this guy here. So I'm going to take from the top here, see where is And I'm just going to put a light touch of this stuff. I'm trying to cover up the black. I don't need parts that are red, but what I'm trying to do is have it so that the upper edges, the black armor would be a lighter black than the bottom edges. So give you a sense that there's light coming in on it. I've hit the parts that are going to be red. What do I care? I'm going to paint that red later. Hit the part that's going to be gray. What do I care? I'm going to paint those gray later. Now, these little upper arms are going to have most of the light. See, we get a slight shade difference, so I'm going to set him down and move on to the next guy. Did I rattle my table? What is that? Alright, so I'll put on the Necromancer cloak. So you see, if by the time you finish one, um, it's dry. We're ready to move on to the next stage. So I'm ready to get started on the red. My favorite red is Mephist in Red by Games Workshop. It's one of their bases. It just covers black so well. So you can see I'm going to use an extra tiny blah brush. You said, well, why don't you just use a normal fine layer brush? That would work. But I've started beating this brush to hell. It doesn't have my, that much life in it, so I know it's going to mess up and make me mad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this brush and opening my pot going to do what I like to call blocking. So I'm going to block it in. So I'm going to find the part that I want to stay black. I like the little defining boundaries. I'm just going to use this brush and mark out that boundary. So just find a plate Launch onto it. And see what a good job is doing covering up the black. Since I knew it had to be red or black, and I had confidence that the fist in red would cover the black. So, let's see, we'll just use this small brush. I keep the cards to my right to make sure I'm blocking it in properly. Well, it doesn't matter how you do it. Sure, paint jobs change over time. Battletech. So once we start blocking in this guy, I've got all the parts like outlined. 
we'll move on to the next one. So I finished uh, my outline, blocking it in, so you can see, just put a line through the areas. I said, okay, this is the boundary between the red and the black on all four models. What that allows me to do is, since I did all my patient work front, I can go ahead, shake up my red again, and I can use my uh, bigger dollar brushes or even a messed up brush, uh, depending on how fine the blocking area is, and just start going to town. It is something like that. Just like that. Big broad strokes. I know where the boundary lines, I can color between the lines, so. Alright, the red has dried enough for me to move on to move to green. And I'm gonna take my smallest brush. We're gonna block in transparent armor of the cockpit. So if you ever wonder, like for fighter jets, they don't call it cockpit glass. It's actually a transparent armor. Some nice little brush strokes. Turn the center and work towards the edge. So you get like a little glop of green on there. You don't want it pushing into the red. So if you start in the center and work your way towards the edge, it thins out that glop. Right. Go on to the next one. By the time we finish all four, the green will be dry. Now we got the green on. Let's go to Army Painter Filthy Cape. As we discussed, the three, well, four primary colors are red, black, green, um, and then gray. And the gray seems to always be on the hands and the weapon systems. Sometimes a little accent color. So the way I paint this thing is I just find a line in the plate, then that way I can put one color on one side of the plate, another color on the other side to avoid some of the free handing. See, now make sure to turn. See, I only have the front art, but make sure to turn it around. Sometimes you'll get like little weapon ports in the back. Like this guy here. The wolfhound. So. My light would stop changing. We're going to just slowly make our way through all four of these guys. By the time we finish with one, the one we started on will be dry. Now we've got the gray on, and I gave him a fancy little racing stripe right there. So I'm going to take some Nuln oil. I'm going to set it right to the side there. I'm going to take a dry brush that's falling apart. Make sure it's clean here. So you can see this brush is falling apart, but I can get a nice little load. And my light is varying. I like to turn them upside down. And one thin wash. This will go on all the cracks and crevices. Give it a little 
texture and color. I like to make sure my brush is wet too. Then got the null oil as I spread it around. Should put it on my right, but I wasn't thinking. Make sure there's no dry pockets anywhere in this. Make sure to move down the back side and get all the legs. Because my dog repeatedly makes noise. Okay, so I've got that done on that guy. And what I like to do is as I wait for it to dry, I'm going to take some stir my mud. And then I'll take the applicator brush. The cloud passes in front of the window. That was weird. And I'll just spread some of this around. Now this isn't one of those where you're done and, you know, by the time I get through the fourth one, the first one's dry. This is going to take a while, so I like to do this right before I go to bed. But I have some free time now, so this is where I'm going to get it in. Some nice little dapples there. So we go wash everyone and texture their base. So now our wash is dry enough, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Mephiston Red. I'm going to run up some of these panels again. Not all of them, just a piece. And then we take just a little bit of red and we push it around. Now what this is, it's just a thin coat. And what you can do with this is decide how many layers of these thin coats you want on. So normally the thing I do just put two coats on anything, the idea that the light is coming down. So I'll put two coats here, and then just one coat where it's shady. Now we're going to go back to our filthy cape. I'm going to do the same thing as with the red. Now this will be a little bit faster. We just take the different panels, and then put a little highlight mark. Mainly on the side that would be facing the light. What I like to do is just make. Look at a little. How to show this? I take like the gun barrel and just take a straight line, and make like a reflective streak down. Back and forth. Horrible for the brush. Good for the paint job. Get the other side even too. There we go. And now I'll do that to the rest of this. Now I'm going to take some Army Painter Poisonous Cloud. This is a bright yellow green. I'm going to take my little tiny brush. I'm going to make, don't need that much paint on it. I'm just going to make like a little triangle. Right there, normally focused on the top. Now something like this. Start, draw an L, 
second layer one thin layer and on these little sections just a little line like that now we're going to take some army painter matte white or a tiny brush again, because these are tiny models. And we'll just make a little. My chair would stop squeaking. Jeez, Louise. And then, where do we see nice places to put a little white street? Something like that. Show it's reflective. And then like a little right angle to think kind of an L shape. And a little dot right there. We just keep going down the line with this. And the last one, and I paid poured out way too much white. Reflective dots are my favorite. All right, so you see I detached the little jumper guy. Got a dry brush here. And then I'm gonna use some Army Painter Ice Storm. Take the dry brush, dip it in the Ice Storm. Got a piece of paper out here. What I'm doing, here, let me take a piece of paper towel and show you. I'm brushing this off until it looks like no paint is coming off. Once it looks like that, I'm going to just hit lightly some of this detail work over the black. Try not to touch the red. This will make a lot of the details pop. Oh, and look at that. That looks nice. So we'll move down the line here. Now, we're pretty much done with the mix. Let's focus on the rocket contrails. So I got some Army Painter Moon Dust. That yellow actually works pretty well. Hmm. All right, got the little brush I did some of the red in. Let's see if I've got all the red out. Probably not. But what I'm going to do is you can see some of the sculpting is nice straight lines. So that will be the yellow from the solid state fuel. I also thought about doing it in blue. Maybe they got like a different fuel in the future. Trying to get even thrust. Okay, 
Okay. All right, and it still has some of the matte white. So we're going to get out any big brush will do. And we'll start working that in. Right down the middle here. Now we finished up our little lance. So you can see what I did is brushed in the white here. I pushed it up to the edge of the moon dust right there. And then I dry brushed it down to the bottom here. And then I put two extra layers of moon dust. First layer there, and the third layer right along the edge to brighten up the yellow. That's a quick way of doing contrails. Looks pretty good. But we're gonna call that a day. So I painted these guys all in one day, um, priming not included. So, hope you enjoy the set. Really good. I'm happy with it. I like having a jumpy guy. Alright, well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.